Okay, so as traders, we are just looking to buy low, sell high. It's that simple, right? Okay, we know that it's harder than that. So what can we look for at a market low, or we can flip it round to a market high, but I'm gonna use a market low, for example, in this video, that maybe gives us a clue that that is a genuine low. Now, I'm looking at this from a day trader's perspective. However, if you're a swing trader, you can of course look at it and, and, and relate that to your time frame that you're trading. So let's have a look. Now, obviously I've been very, very crude with my chart patterns here on the whiteboard, just for example. So you've got to have a real reasonable bit of imagination here, but I want to talk about the price action and exactly what the price move and what everything is telling us about the market that may give us a clue that that is a low or it's not a low. Now ultimately what you can see with this is that almost every single one of these, the price is exactly the same. If this was the same value, so you know 100.1 or whatever, all exactly the same, but the way it's got there is different. Now this is what I wanna get into a bit more. So you can imagine we've got a heavy down, we've got a downtrend here, and this is kind of a generic downtrend, a bit of a flake up, some bear flags, pullbacks. Obviously you get different permutations of that, but these are kind of those that are put into any part of that chart, if that makes sense. So let's look at number one first. And number one is, we've pushed down, we're at the lows, and we're flagging in a tight flag at the low. We've got a little tiny bit of support here. But the flag or the little congestion area is in the lower 10% of the trend. So what is that telling us from a price action perspective? And what is that telling us from a other mother market participants perspective? To me, that is saying, okay, we've moved down from high to low in a reasonably short period of time. Let's say at the open, it's about an hour. And now we're advertising to buyers and saying, hey, do you know what? We are now that much cheaper in an hour. Do you want to come and buy? And at this moment in time, while it's sitting there, nobody has stepped up and said, that is value. No buyer has said, that is really good value. I think I'm going to buy. Similarly, no seller has backed off. It's still holding there. So you haven't got that seesaw kind of environment where you've got buyers and sellers kind of pushing against each other. When you've got that equilibrium, basically buyers are accepting that as a new price point. And so for me, to buy there wouldn't make any sense. You know, I would want to see its behavior after that because this could chop around here while it perceived as a new value point, but that's no good for us as traders. We want to get something that we consider as good value if we're buying or good value if we're selling. So I would like to wait for a retest of that and see what happens or a burst up, <coughs> a burst up that holds again. So. It's kind of waiting for the second and third phases of the move. Now compare that to this. We've come to a new low here, which is the same as this, but immediately buyers have considered that as value. They've bought it and it's shot up aggressively and then come back down and revisited. So there's two things to look at here. One is buyers have perceived that as value, it's shot back up. However, sellers have perceived that as value still and it's come straight back down again. To me, that becomes more of an equilibrium type trade. You know, you know, at least you know, compared to this one, that there are buyers around. Yes, they may be overcome and this thing may just go hammer into the ground, but you have at least got information that the last time it was there, some buyers stepped in. Compare it to that, when you had no information at all, no buyers had stepped in there. So maybe you've got a little bit of an idea and you can say, you know what, buyers have stepped in before, maybe this time they will again. That's looking more likely that I can have a go at that from the long side. Number three, similar to number one. However, the difference with this is we've seen a little bit of buying activity, a little bit. But for me, this is kind of much more bearish because what you've had is you've had, it's a mixture of these two here, a drive lower, a little auction process advertising to buyers at a better price. Some buyers came in, but they couldn't get it very far. They could only get it up to kind of uh, the pen's running out a bit here. They're gonna get it up to the first 30%, the th first third or the lower third of the quad of the um, of the trend, and then the sellers came in immediately. So it advertised higher prices and the and really not very high at all, but sellers still came on it. To me, that is a short trade. That would be one of my trades that I want to get short. You've you've popped up, you've advertised a little bit, you haven't even gone that high, and people are still perceiving that as, as worth hitting from a sell perspective. The chance of that going through for me are probably a lot higher than something like that or something like that. So then you've got number four, which is 
kind of a flip of that, but different in a way. And if we think about who's got involved and who hasn't got involved. So you've advertised lower and you haven't really got any buyers come in. Sellers have become more aggressive, but then buyers have thought, you know what? That's actually not too bad, that value there, because that wasn't really good value at that point, but this is okay. They don't mind getting involved in it and they've pushed up and vice versa. Sellers have thought, you know, that's a little bit too low now. I'm getting a little bit low. I'm not getting as much of my money here. Let me just wait. So the combination of those two has caused that to come back up to that congestion point. Now for me, what I'll be looking for from that is, well, at least I can work my trade from some key levels. So I've got this kind of test level here and I've got my level here. So I bracket it my bracket my trade like that and I'd see what the price response is to a test of those levels. I wouldn't wanna get involved in any of that. I'd wanna see what happened when we tested this. So if we broke up here and then held above, maybe that's okay for a long for me. I'm interested now because we've advertised lower, bought in some buyers, come back up, that's kind of held. Maybe we're now gonna do some more moving to the upside. However, the vice versa, we could come back and retest this low here. This is getting a bit messy, but I hope you can understand what I'm saying. We retest the low here and buy a step in again. That would then be worth a buy for me because at least I can quantify my risk. I can say it's held once, held twice. Let me take it along here. Let me put my stop under that low here and assume that release can come back into that congestion zone. So the difference is working out who it's encouraged in, who it's encouraged out, and who it's enticing and who isn't enticing, and also who's trapped as well. Perhaps that's another, perhaps another video, but it's also, it's also working out. Ultimately, as a trader, you want to know who after you, uh, who's gonna buy after you've bought that's gonna make the price go up? Or what reason are they gonna buy after you've bought that's gonna make the price go up or vice versa? Let's look at quickly number five. Number five, heavy downtrend, very, very tight pullback here. Now that really is telling you this thing's bearish. It's not pulled back for long. The time of that pullback was minuscule. It's gone straight to new lows again. And if that's at a low, I'm not stepping anywhere near it. You know, let this thing do what it needs to do. If anything, you're looking for shorts here, not chasing, but you're looking for a pullback to get short on. But as we're talking about looking for a market low, I wanna see far more, uh, I wanna see someone else being a pioneer and stepping in. You know, let's see how it tests that again. Let's see how further if it tests that. Let's see what the result is after we test it. I need to see, two or three more phases of a low before I'm stepping in at that point there. So to me, that's kind of wait, step back, see if it kind of does one of those two, four things. And then finally, very quickly, number six, you've got this chop. So you've got the high, it goes to a low, takes a new high, a new low, new high, new low. This is a little bit, I've got to be a little bit cautious to this. Now, logically, you would think, well, we've, we've sucked in a lot of people at the high here because we broke out the high. We sucked in some buyers. They're gonna get stopped as we go through the low. But if it's kind of doing this and doing that, I'm always a little bit cautious because generally speaking, this is this range isn't that much. You don't normally get a 100, 200 point range at doing that. That's normally gonna be a very tight kind of range. And at some point, it's almost looking to see who's gonna back off first and just fly off one way or the other. So, you know, unless that's a really big range, I'm always cautious of that because to me, that's too much two-sided trade. There's not one side in control. I just want to see who's in control and just jump on their side. You know, I just want to ride the coattails of the guys who are doing volume or the guys who are trapped or the guys who are making urgent moves as opposed to this kind of choppy environment, which it could go anywhere. I could fly off to the downside, it could fly off to the upside. And I don't really want to do that. I would rather wait and see it resolve and then look for the next setup. So those are some things to look for at a market low, just some different permutations and different chart patterns that you get. But I think the key takeaway here is just to think of who's getting involved, what has happened before, how that's affected the psychology of the participants, and then trying to make a guess of where the price could go from that. And most importantly, a place to quantify your risk. You can find a decent place to have a go at a trade where your risk is reasonably quantified relative to the setup that you're doing, then you're onto a winner.